Hi guys, welcome back to FPSG Life. For today's video, I'll be talking about education and ears. If you enjoyed this video, hit thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. For next week's video, I'll be talking about equipment and equipment and aids that would help a person with a hearing impairment. When it comes to a child's education and hearing loss, it depends on the area you live in and what's and your own child's needs. Not everyone is fortunate to live in a health authority that meets their needs. My mum was told from but my mum was told that my sister Ronnie had special needs so she's so she sent my sister to Combrook, which is mainly for people with moderate learning disabilities difficulties and here is my sister just telling you her experience about being at Combrook School. When I'm young I rely on the lip breeze because I learned how to automatically and I copy everyone because the teachers are facing on the board when I need them on for a face face on lip read like this so a bit on board or looking away like that I don't like it so instead I copy everyone and then in my primary school I used to do Magneton but they do some but one of them is going quite fast so I don't catch the mark so I instead of copy everyone as well for them assembly as well yeah and then only one teacher that do believe me is the one that I really know from primary school so she understand me so well more than all teachers so as my sister just mentioned she ended up teaching herself how to read lips because she struggled to follow what was going on in class. She, uh, my sister had hearing aids from year four. Um, unfortunately, due to chronic ear infections and, and it, um, yeah, chronic ear infections, she couldn't wear them often. So yeah, and another thing that my sister mentioned was as a coping mechanism, my sister would copy would copy students what they were doing with work. She would she would follow what a classmate was doing. Um, like an assembly, if people were raising their hands up, she would do that too. If a classmate took a tray to, I don't know, took a tray to a certain place in a classroom, she would she would do the same. She would follow after. She would never be first. And this is something that I think a teacher noticed. Another thing was, as my, yes, yeah, she, she mentioned that she learnt Magaton and yeah, she, well, she did. She, she learnt Magaton through Convict School and we were happy with that. It, it meant that there was more language, it meant, it built her language skills a little bit. It meant we were able to communicate with her better. And also, quite a lot of people with um, special needs do tend to learn Makaton first. And that's absolutely fine, obviously, it's absolutely fine because it's, it's one of the more, I don't know how, you, with Makaton there's more pictures rather than signs, along with signs, so it's, it's more recognised. I mean, I've, I've heard lately that they're teaching how babies learn to talk and stuff. And yeah, so another thing is that, yeah, I think that's it. She, yeah, we, we, we liked her being in Combrook. And another thing I forgot to say is that my sister would, as another coping mechanism, is she would say yes to a lot of things. She would say yes. She would, it, she'd be asked, Say yes or no question she'd say yes a lot and yeah I think that's pretty much it I'm gonna say 
So for the next clip, my sister is going to talk about going to a secondary school, which was St. Luke's. Before I started St. Luke's, my mum pinned all the, not pin, I mean, tell all the teachers in my primary school that I wanted to go to the deaf community school if in the secondary school. They do have autism learning disability, well, moderate learning disability, and they do have deaf, yeah, they do have deaf face there, which is for people who can't hear anything. So in that classroom, they got sign language for communicator for what the teacher's saying. If they face the board again, got communicator there, better than primary school. And yeah, um, well, when there's a like, fire alarm set off, they got a like, alert fire alarm, not a loud one, but they will red flash a light like that. So I did by the land, it's so easier. And yeah, so that's all I do communicate. Bonnie did transition to St. Luke's, and as she mentioned, Mum did, Mum, Mum did ask, she requested that my sister attended to St. Luke's and yeah they, they, it was a little bit of a battle but you know she got there and with St. Luke's school Ronnie's life really changed for the better, it truly really, really did. She found her place, she found the missing piece that she was missing, she was able to be more herself. We, yeah it was just incredible, it meant that she was she, with St. Luke's, they have a, have a deaf unit. As Ronnie said, it was for people with um, learning difficulties. And they also, have, like Ronnie said, they have a unit for the deaf. And it's called, it's called Heath, hang on. It was called Heathlands. Heath. Afterwards, she went to, after St. Luke's, she went to Oakland's College, which is a, which is integrated. So there's people with no health, with no needs. And to, I don't want to say norm, normal people, but people with no um, learning difficulties and people with learning difficulties or autism and stuff like that. And um, hard of hearing, obviously, for Ronnie. She, so, her hearing, her, like with St. Luke's, her hearing disability was recognised. She, and because of that, she was accepted more in class. I forgot to say that about St. Luke's, is that they're both, both places, they understood that she had a limb learning disability. They both understood them because of that, they were able to accommodate properly. And that meant that she enjoyed going to school. She loved, my, she made loads of friends, she fitted in well. She, yeah, she, I think I feel like she to be honest, and, yeah, she, I forgot to say with St. Luke, she also, like she said, with the fire alarms, they told her and stuff, and it's, yeah, she, it's obviously with a lot of people with FASD, it's not easy when it comes to education, I mean, I'm, with me in primary school, it wasn't great to be honest, but yeah, so, um, the next thing I am going to be talking about are things that a teacher can do to help a young person who is hearing impaired. So when I, I, I just realised I keep saying hearing impairment, it doesn't just mean person with who's hard of hearing, it could also mean, it could also mean a person who is deaf. So it's, like, it's a wide, wide scale, moderate hearing loss to profound and it's a really wide spectrum so I'm going to be saying hearing impairment a lot so yeah right so things a teacher can do to help a a student who is hearing impaired uh, change seating plans which is a really really good one because then that way they'll be closer to the board they'll be able to read it they'll be able to read what the teacher is saying and another thing is face a student when speaking which obviously Ronnie said it it did help her a lot and to be honest I think that's something that should be given anyways. 
minimal background if it's possible so obviously with if they're hearing impaired they won't be able to there's like the background noise it's not it won't be clear the message will be mixed and their attention will be elsewhere and and better lighting better lighting which is actually because if, if they're trying to read a person's lips they need to be able to see properly they you know it's, it's not just opening a load of windows and opening and switching on the left, left, opening all the curtains and switching on a load of lights. It's also, it's just making sure where the student is sitting, they're able to see you, they're able to see your lips. And yeah. And another one is plan for misinstruction or assignments or homework. So it's just simply make sure you're prepared, really. I mean, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. But there's there's so much information out there for people, for loads and loads of people, to be honest. So much information, honestly, it's just amazing. There are thousands of schools, thousands, there are so many schools for people with a hearing, hearing impairment. I looked it up the other day, it was just fascinating, honestly. And yeah, I, and I'm going to leave it like that. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and next week I'll be talking about equipment or and aids for people who are hearing impaired. Bye guys!